the the good thing with being the last no siguro yung perks for being the last presenter is marami na po kayong natutunan from our uh, five good speakers and um there's no need for me to discuss about what caves are so i'll just focus on this specific organism na uh, hindi nakikita they are very microscopic but kinatatakutan just like the causative agent of the covid-19 which is the sars-cov-2 Next slide, please. So I'll be sharing with you some of our discoveries. Um, some have been published already, but others are still waiting to be written. And, uh, and because we still need to, further, uh, to do further characterization of these uh, microorganisms. So this has been mentioned by uh, Dr. Lee that uh, since 2008, the UPLB Museum of Natural History through, the, um, uh, uh, through its cave biodiversity assessment uh, program has already visited numerous uh, caves in the Philippines. Uh, Unfortunately, I was not able to include here uh, the Santa Teresita Cave in Cagayan. So next slide, please. So uh, I'll be focusing, as I mentioned, on the microorganisms in the Philippines, excluding the viruses, because I think uh, extensive na yung uh, presentation ni Prof. Albiola on uh, bat viruses. So I'll be... Um, the, the microorganisms that I'll be uh, presenting to you were isolated from um, the samples collected from two caves in Mabini, Pangasinan, the Caballoriza and Kakupangan Caves. Next slide, please. So uh, I think Mr. Lucanias, Ichan, as we call him Ichan, has already mentioned about the bat guano and of course Sir Philip as well. So we have isolated several microorganisms from the bat guano that we collected from the two caves because they are good substrate for microorganisms aside from being an ideal fertilizer. Why? Next slide, please. Because we found out that uh, chemical analysis of the bat one, particularly uh, the percentage of the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium, it's much higher compared with soil and vermicast, except for the potassium. No? Mas mataas pa rin yung potassium content ng vermicast compared with bat guano. That's why bat guano are being harvested and being commercialized. No? Uh, they are sold in the market as uh, fertilizer. Next slide, please. So in one of our studies, and I think um, one of my co-authors is here, uh, Mr. Andrew Montesilio, we have published the uh, metagenome, the first in the Philippines on the uh, metagenome of the Philippine bat guano, which were uh, collected from Caballeriza Cave. And you can see just for the bacterial diversity, napaka-diverse, no? Uh, napakadami pala ng, ng klase ng bacteria ang matatagpuan sa bat guano pa lang. And uh, interestingly, streptomyces species, species a uh, bacterium is very abundant in the core microbiome of the bat guano through uh, the high throughput sequencing that we use. And streptomyces, next slide please, uh, no, I'm so sorry. Aside from that, um, by analyzing the functional profiles of the, the, the genes present in the bat guano, um, we found out that uh, these genes are involved in the metabolism of different biomolecules, including carbohydrates, uh, lipids, nucleotides, and they can really produce, uh, they have this potential to produce secondary metabolites such as the antimicrobial, so very familiar na tayo dito because as there is this emerging and re-emergence of uh, infectious diseases, kailangan natin meron tayong backup or standby ni, na sources ng antibiotics. Okay, next slide please. So ito po yung sinasabi ko that uh, the isolated streptomyces is found active against uh, several species of bacillus and um, 
also uh, some gram negative microorganisms, which I have not included in this slide. So we are now proposing two new uh, possible um, species of uh, streptomyces isolated from the Caballerisa cave. Next slide, please. So we have also isolated several uh, methylotropes. No? They are those uh, bacteria that um, utilizes C1 compounds. So this includes the methane and the methanol. And they, are, uh, they can be a potential source of cheaper and cleaner fuel and chemicals. So you will note in this uh, picture the polyhydroxybutyrate being produced by uh, some members of this uh, methylotrophic bacteria. And saan natin to pwedeng gamitin? Next slide, please. So these are the different methylotrophic bacteria that we have isolated from the bat guano. Uh, the same bat guano that we collected from the Caballerisa cave. And next slide. So the PHB can be produced, uh, that can be used, no? this microorganism or this bacteria that can produce the PHB can be used for the production of biodegradable plastic. So medyo mababawasan na yung ating consumption ng uh, plastics na isang environmental pollution. Next slide, please. So aside from these, we have also isolated uh, microorganisms that have been reported for with biomineralization applications. So if you have heard of the microbiologically induced uh, carbonate, calcium carbonate precipitation, they are uh, they can be no, they can be. Um, through the action of this uh, microorganism, especially those that na may mga boxes like the sporocyrsina and the are um, I think the rhodococcus no and the arthrobacter. So the MICP is being used for, for as binders, soil binders. And uh, they can also strengthen the soil and stabilizes it. Um, yung ginagamit sa ating uh, structural construction. And then uh, bricks, they can be used as uh, in the production of bricks. Actually, there is a graduate student in the Institute of uh, Biology in UP Diliman who has successfully produced uh, bricks from microorganisms, uh, especially uh, those that uh, can um, that produces the ureates, no? releases the ureates. So aside from this, this microorganism, particularly this bacteria, balik po tayo sa unang slide. Okay, thank you. Uh, can also be used for bioremediation for the removal of chemical uh, chemical wastes, no. Next slide. Thank you. Next slide, please. So aside from this, hindi lang naman po bacteria yung nating nakita sa guano, we have also isolated several uh, fungal uh, fungal species, including the penicillium uh, species as uh, shown here uh, from the Caballerisa cave. And um, those dun sa, sa inyo pong left, uh, yung po itsura niya sa sla, as a plates uh, using a special medium wherein you can see the production of a blue-green pigment. And we were able to extract this blue-green pigment and is now doing the profiling. And these pigments from this um, mold can be used for uh, dyeing textiles or um, inks. No? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, aside from that, we have also produced uh, some bacteriocene or peptides that are um, uh, known as colicine. No? The colicine, this is produced by an E. coli or Escherichia coli that were uh, is different strains of e, e. coli that were isolated from the bat guano. And what's good with this colicine, this is being produced by an E. coli that is against an E. coli. So I'm, my apologies uh, kung may naririnig kayong asong tumatahol. So Yan po ang aking uh, normal background. And uh, fortunately, this uh, paper won uh, second place in the uh, research poster exhibit by uh, one of our students, um, 
Mr. Uh, John Leonard Chan. He's a graduate student in the Institute of Biological Sciences, uh, major in microbiology. Next slide, please. So aside from Batuano, uh, our students in cave ecology, which has been mentioned by Dr. Lee, uh, were able to publish as well uh, the different um, bacteria that were isolated from the water of Kakupangan Cave. So if you will remember, there are caves that are being used for ano, paliligo no? or uh, they get their water, their uh, drinking water inside the cave. So our student, Ms. Uh, Michelle Palanca, studied the relative abundance of the different bacteria that were isolated from the water of Kakupangan Cave. And unfortunately, it's very high in coliform. And uh, there are so many pathogenic microorganisms present in the the water sample that were isolated or that were collected inside the Kakupangan cave. Next slide, please. The same is, uh, in that same publication, one of the students or one of the authors, main authors, Mr. Matthew Incon, uh, Incon uh, Abris, also studied the air quality, no? uh, the, the rate or the, the rate of or index of microbial air contamination inside the Kakupangan cave, and um, it was um, uh, it was ranked as uh, threatened by fungi with a remarks of three. So, medyo mataas. So, uh, I think this is a good collaboration work, possible collaboration work with Mom Jack, as she mentioned in her pre presentation on how air inside the caves uh, can affect or be affected by the fungal, uh, the fungal uh, um, population or the, uh, the fungi that are present inside the caves. So we have here uh, Mr. Abris um, listed here the different uh, fungal species that he isolated from the Kakumpangan cave, including the Aspergillus, the Penicillium, Cladosporium, Fusarium, and at a certain level, they can, they can be pathogenic, especially for those with uh, immune compromise. Uh, next slide, please. So there are many challenges no, as uh, we work on caves. Uh, I think ito yung mga na-recycle ko pa, old uh, slides. But still, I would like to spell out caves based on uh, C for comprehensive coverage. Uh, DNR, our friends from DNR and the RCC, even uh, our speakers have mentioned that there are more than 2,000 caves in the Philippines. And this is where uh, nicer caves will come in. We will be helping, um, of course, uh, the, RC, the Regional Cave Committee and DNR in doing this work. There are so many caves in the Philippines and um, mas maganda tulong-tulong tayo. No? So at least man lang how many percent of this 2,000 can, uh, can be explored and studied. Assistance, uh, we need technical and financial assistance. And we are very grateful to the OSD for the trust that they have given us. And of course, to UPLB. Um, and uh, sabi nga po, ma masama naman pong magyabang. Pero na-mention na po ni uh, nila Dr. Leet at nila Dr. Gonzalez that we have the expertise in the MNH. So pwede kami makapag-provide ng uh, technical assistance. Valuability, sinabi po ni Sir June, na ang caves ay hindi lang for scientific, no? It can be for educational, cultural, historical, economic, and even aesthetic. So marami po siyang uh, uh, pinaggagamitan or paggagamitan. And again, I mentioned the expertise. And I'm sure uh, BNR will also be very much willing to help us no? uh, in, uh, in this uh, nicer program and of course sustainability and this can be done with our partnership not only uh, local but international with our curators and of course our students who have been helping a lot in uh, in the isolation sa sa amin po no sa micro marami pong mga estudyante ang nakatulong 
and they have isolated a number of microorganisms uh, na until now ay pinag-aaralan pa rin namin. Even their very limited time to work on uh, their special problem. And we are very thankful to all our partners. Next slide, please. So, again, um, uh, we are very thankful uh, na naging, um, naging programa. Hindi lang siya isang programa, kundi isang nicer program ang CAVE sa UPLB MNH. And I agree with Sir Philip na noon ay na-envision ni Dr. Lit ito na maging unique na niche ng uh, UPLB MNH Research. And ito na, Sir, nasa na isa sa katuparan na po natin ang, in, ang ating mga pangarap. So next slide. So I am so uh, grateful kasi I am uh, part of the Project 4. And uh, with me are the team that will be working on the different, uh, uh, that will be working on the microbiome of bat gut and guano from caves in Calabarzon. So na mention na po ito ni Dr. Gonzalez on why are we going to do this, but it's this project is with uh, four studies. So the first will be the comparative microbiome studies. So it will be headed by um, Professor Andrew Montesilio with Mr. Bonnie Datul in the house as the research associate. And then the phenomics and genomics of selected functional and pathogenic bacteria and fungi. And we have our, uh, of course, uh, through the expertise of Professor uh, Dr. Noel G. Sabino and Dr. Ronilo Jose D. Flores of the Institute of Biological Sciences, and with the research associate, uh, Ms. Erolyn Ann Benitez. And for the study three, we will be establishing a resource a center of cave microorganisms. And I'm very happy that the members or faculty of the um, Institute of Computer Science by Professor Fermin Roberto Lapitan, Professor Arian J. Hasildo, and Professor Myla Risti Anacleto. I um, kasama po namin with our uh, computer programmer. Uh, Mr. Aaron Magnaye, and this has been mentioned by doc, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, that part of our project is the uh, creation of a biosafety manual um, for the uh, handling of uh, these uh, organisms, especially bats, so from the field up to the uh, laboratory. So we will also be doing risk assessment as basis for this standard operating procedure. And uh, I think that's the second to the last uh, slide. And that's it. Thank you very much. Back to you, Michelle.